Some pockets of wind continue to keep Aurora photographers on their toes, and the low level of activity is sure to give some amateur radio operators some trouble. All those stories and more in the news this week. The sun continues its descent towards solar minimum. You can tell now because we've got these dark coronal hole regions that are forming more in the north and in the south and less in the equator regions. These are the sources of all the fast solar wind and the solar storms we've been getting recently. We have had some minor solar storm eruptions that have been in the Earth strike zone. We're feeling the effects of that now, but it's pretty minor. And then later in this week, you can see a finger of that coronal hole is going to come back into Earth strike zone. We should start getting some wind from that later in the week. Switching to our MFLAR threat meter, you can see we are very low in terms of solar flux. We're hardly getting any flares that are even popping at the C-class level. This means the solar flux is staying really low, and we're hardly even getting enough uh, flux for amateur radio propagation right now, and that's probably going to continue for the rest of this week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we actually have had a little bit of storming. Uh, it's been pretty sporadic. We had a good pocket there on the 15th and into the 16th, which then kind of bounced again on the 17th. All of this has been due to some fast wind from some coronal holes that have given us some sporadic but beautiful pulsating aurora if you've been able to catch it. Meanwhile, things have begun to calm back down and we're expecting to continue to be quiet like this until about the 27th. And the fast solar wind gave us gorgeous aurora pretty much everywhere, but you had to know when and where to look. For example, we had beautiful aurora in Norway, and we had coronas, insane coronas in Finland, we had it in multiple places in Scotland. We even had a red proton arc, but you had to catch it by camera. We had gorgeous aurora in Ireland, and it even made it as far south as Denmark and clear down to the Netherlands. We also had aurora in Quebec. It was all over Canada. Gorgeous show shows in uh, Ontario. We had it in multiple places in Saskatchewan. We also had it in multiple places in Calgary. In the United States, we had coronas in Alaska, and it even made it as far south as Montana. And of course, we had gorgeous aurora down south in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see this huge line of like active areas all in a pilgrimage on the backside of the disk right now. Only a couple of these are real active regions, but they all are kind of showing a lot of activity and a little bit of growth here and there. Now, these regions will be making their pilgrimage and coming back around to the Earth side of the disk here in the next couple of days. And and that should help you ham radio operators get a little bit more solar flux and maybe up our flare uh, risk just a little bit. But until then, we can kind of sit quiet because we don't have any M flare players on the disk. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2519 is now rotated off of the west limb, and what we're left with is region 2524. Now this region, despite the fact that it was firing off a lot of solar storms and flares back when it was just rotating into Earth view, it has since quieted down, and we're not really expecting all that much from it now. It has fired off a couple of solar storms, but they've not been uh, in the Earth strike zone, so we're expecting that trend to continue as it rotates off of the west limb. The only thing we're waiting for now is that uh, line of uh, active areas that are going to be rotating back into view. We're expecting that we're going to keep the M flare risk still pretty low, but hopefully the solar flux will rise just a little bit to help you amateur radio operators. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the arrival of that high-speed wind somewhere around the 27th, maybe even late on the 26th. NOAA is giving us about a 20% chance of a minor storm at high latitudes until that wind hits. Once it hits, we're going to jump up into a major storm possibility and then calm down after that. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 5 to 15 percent chance of a minor storm, uh, and that should also begin to calm down as we move into the early parts of next week. So your ham radio operators, you're probably still going to experience some real issues, uh, but we do have another chance for some beautiful aurora. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook for the coming week, we only have a couple active regions on the disk right now, and they are very quiet. As a matter of fact, the activity is so low that we're actually having issues with some solar flux levels being high enough for amateur radio propagation. So you guys are probably going to have a problem over the next couple days, and then of course this solar wind hits that's going to give us potentially another solar storm. So the amateur radio propagation this week is looking pretty bad. 
So the activity this week is mainly going to be dominated by fast wind from coronal holes. So you aurora photographers need to stay vigilant because aurora is going to be sporadic most likely. We also have had a few mini solar storm launches, but they're not really affecting Earth right now. And that low activity is going to frustrate the amateur radio operators because we have the solar flux remaining extremely low. And that will probably continue for the rest of this week. But one thing is for sure. The sun always changes, so next week we expect to have more active regions rotate into view and that solar flux should rise again, so the propagation should get better. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.